I think now we should chant Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, my name is Sita Padi Das. And my name is Dana Devi. And we have with us today His Holiness Swami Bhaktivedanta Tripurari, live from, where is it that you are at the moment, Maharaj? I'm in uh, my ashram, Audaria, in Northern California. Awesome. Thank you for making yourself available today to share these pastimes. It's the 50th anniversary of the installation of the deities of Sri Sri Kishore Kishori in ISKCON, Chicago. And in addition to your vast um, suite of pastimes in this life, you were pivotal in the early pastimes there in Chicago with the BBT Airport Sankirtan Party. And also I understand that you were the resident sannyasi there in Chicago for many years up until the 1980s. And so we would love to hear from you. Is that, is that correct? Let me check on that first. Well, I, I don't know if I was officially the resident sannyasi there. I, I did spend a lot of time, but I traveled um, at the same time. So I think it was more like a, a base for me, if you will. I see. So, yeah, we would like to create the space and, and the opportunity for you to share and to hear from you and, and for the devotees to hear from you about the pastimes there. Yes, thank you for the opportunity. Um, I appreciate it. I'm uh, humbled by that. Uh, and uh, by the grace of Kishore Kishori, who do have a very, uh, they play a very central role in the uh, dissemination of Prabhupada's books. And uh, they utilized me uh, considerably in, in that regard. I can, um, beautiful name, Kishore Kishori, it's a little bit of a, well, it's a unique name and that Kishore is mentioned before Kishori. I know the prophet was asked about that and he said, well, save the best for the last, Jai Kishori. But, uh, <laughs> But uh, it's a bit of a, a Narmasaka Bhav name, to, in a sense, to uh, mention Krishna, to take his side before Radha. But whether that was on Prabhupada's mind is entirely, is, is, of course, it's not, not something he revealed. But um, I know that the deities were um, uh, giving the darshan themselves uh, previous to their being installed in Chicago and Bombay. And there was a famous Pandal program there that they presided over. And um, after the uh, the uh, discourse, Prabhupada's uh, discourse, during the Kirtan, Prabhupada got up and danced and circumambulated the deities, which of course um, all of his disciples uh, followed suit and, and danced along them. Shortly after that, they came to Chicago. Someone may know a little bit more about the history of that than myself, but um, I had the opportunity to come to the Chicago Temple very shortly after they were installed. It must have been um, in the summer or the early fall of 1973. And um, at that time, um, Prior to that, I was living in the uh, Los Angeles temple, which Prabhupada named uh, New Dwarka. And um, in, I believe it was early 1973, my good friend and uh, though he was also much a contributor to the uh, dissemination of Prabhupada's books, Ramaswar Prabhu, began to send me different places to uh, inspire the devotees in, in, in book distribution. He sent me to London. He sent me to New York. And he sent me to Chicago. And then he sent me to Australia. And um, there was um, a significant, uh, I would say, difference between Chicago and New York. And, Chicago, and excuse me, New York and, and, and Los Angeles and Chicago, and that New York was 
verging and had many, many devotees in Los Angeles did as well. And these two cities at opposite uh, poles, east and west of the United States were a little bit uh, competitive um, in, a, in, a, in a beautiful and charming way. We were all very young, innocent in those days. And, um, and by contrast, uh, Chicago, which is a, was probably the third largest city in the United States at the time, you had New York, Los Angeles, and Chicago um, in, the, in the center, in the Midwest, these two other two on the two coasts. But by contrast, uh, it did not have the same uh, 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 number of members, participants, devotees. It was a smaller, um, smaller, smaller yatra there at, at the time. Um, and so when I came to uh, Chicago, which I happen to be familiar with to some extent because I lived there from eight to 18 in my uh, early boyhood up until um, uh, late adolescence. And uh, so that was my first return, if you will, to the area. Now I was probably uh, 24 or something like that. Um, and, um, and the temple was quite uh, intimate comparatively. Los Angeles was rather large, and as I say, New York rather large, London also quite a few, um, um, many more uh, devotees. It was very um, uh, intimate comparatively, and Kishore Kishori loomed uh, very, very large on, on the altar. And um, I was uh, very uh, startled by their appearance they had a, a unique uh, appearance from my in my estimation in comparison to the other deities that i had served rukmini and dwarkadish uh, radical cool i think it's radical cool in london in the manor there in bury place also um and um radical in new york and um i felt very much uh um very much sheltered there at that time. And and at that time, the uh, O'Hare Airport was also the center of all of the airport um, traffic in the United States. It was the main hub, right? Um, and it ha so happened that, that it, it was uh, legal for the devotees to distribute books in, in the O'Hare Airport. And um, that's based on the Constitution of the United States, which um, guarantees freedom of speech in public places. And so the airport was deemed a public place. And our uh, religious proselytization, if you will, was a form of uh, free speech. We weren't allowed to sell books and set up a, a, a uh, such an enterprise, but to give the books away and accept donations was the fine kind of uh, gray area that um, allowed us to have that facility. And at that time, to date, the no other airports were uh, offering that facility. I remember in Los Angeles, before I had come to Chicago, uh, we had started to distribute books there in in disguise, so to speak, we would we would wear secular clothing and and um, move around the airport with books and suitcases and stop and sit down next to someone and start a conversation, bring out a book and so forth. It was only a, a couple of us that did that, myself and and Leela Shakti, god sister of mine, um, and um, I can remember in those days uh, that uh, it was a you know it was a big airport and the two of us would be wandering around secretly and illegally in the airport uh, selling books or seeking donations for profits books and I would see her at a, at a distance and it was such a camaraderie I, I felt for her and she for me as well we were doing the same thing we knew exactly what the experience was the ecstasy of it the agony of it also and <laughs> talk to people and not always finding them receptive and to avoid <laughs> the authorities and, and so on and so forth. And so comparatively, um, to come to, to Chicago at the feet of Kishore Kishori 
and be able to distribute books in an airport in our devotional attire, legally and so forth, was an extraordinary uh, experience. Mm -hmm. um, because, of course, uh, the airports were a place where you could you meet people from all over the world and the books would go all over the world. And that was more or less, you know, my meditation that, wow, what a facility this is for the uh, distribution of, of, of Prophet's books by standing in one place. You can send books, you know, to, uh, all over the world. It was very staggering to me to think about that. And the fact that we could do so in Chicago freely was just extraordinary. So my experience there, I spent about two weeks there. I, Sri Govinda was the president. Sri, Sri Lake, his wife, they're very accommodating. I remember Rumila was there also as a young devotee, her husband at the time, Prophet Tovish. Um, I can't remember others, there are a few others, but um, myself, a couple of uh, men and ladies, you know, we, we were going out to the airport and I was showing them what I what I knew and and um, and the entire time that I was there, um, I was in a spiritual uh, trance. And I think it was the, the place where I began, I wasn't unfamiliar with spiritual trance by any means at that time, um, um, but it, uh, it was there that going uh, to sleep at night, taking rest at night in a trance, I would wake up in the same state. And so it was a con continuous um, uh, um, state of ecstasy. And um, I, I, uh, uh, stood before Kishore Kishori and I petitioned them at that time. That this is such an extraordinary facility here that's being provided. You're the presiding you know, deity of the Midwest here, the center uh, of, of the entire country. And here is the airport that by your grace is facilitating this. And I petitioned them to give me the power and the insight how to take advantage of this and expand this possibility. Hmm? And I didn't know um, um, how they would respond, but I was confident that they would. The first verse that I ever learned was from Bhagavad Gita, in the 10th, uh, 10th chapter, a verse that uh, most of the devotees will be familiar with. Tesham satata yuktanam bhajitam priti purvakam vadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayanti te. And um, over the years, you know, I've, I've, I've learned quite a bit of uh, um, philosophy and theology, especially, you know, primarily uh, Gaudiya theology and, and philosophy and many verses and, and um, insights and so forth. But as far as Abhideya goes, as far as the means goes, the way, there's no more comprehensive uh, verse than this. I could, I could forget all the verses and all the knowledge that I've gathered over all the years about Gaudiya Vaishnavism. And with this verse alone, um, putting, uh, dedicating oneself, as the verse says, uh, continually with love, serving Krishna, Dadami Bhuti Yogam Chah. He will give the knowledge. He will come from within, tell us hmm, how to come to him, show us the way. Um, so it's a very important verse to me, and I thought of the verse at, at the time. At the time, Kishore didn't, 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 didn't speak to me um, directly, but I got a strong um, impression that my petition was uh, not unreasonable and, and didn't go unheard. Hmm. And so when I left um, um, Chicago and returned back to, to Los Angeles, shortly thereafter, we're getting now towards the end of 73, Ramaswar Prabhu sent me to Australia, where I spent a month. I went to New Zealand also. And um, from there, I was invited to go to India to the festival, which was the, really the first uh, Mayapur Vrindavan festival. And um, when I arrived there, I arrived ahead of Prabhupada, Prabhupada hadn't come yet. 
and I was privileged to stay in the straw hut that Prabhupada used to stay in. And at that time, two sannyasis, very famous, and a couple of real uh, colorful characters, Yashodananda Swami and Guru Kripa Swami, they were also there. They were staying there. They had come to the United States from India uh, earlier in, in 1973, and they were traveling throughout the United States and raising money uh, for Prabhupada, and they were um, um, causing a little bit of a commotion in relation to the temple presidents whose brahmacharis they were stealing for their own party and and, and so forth. So when I came there, uh, you know, I was a little bit famous by this time and, um, and um, still, a, I, I wasn't a sannyasi, but I was well known. And, and so they pulled me aside and they said, oh, Trafar, you have to give us the names of all the best book distributors in, in North America, because 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 they're probably going to be coming to the festival, and we're going to you know take them for our party, and so I was a little perplexed how to you know deal with it, with with that because uh, you know they were sannyasis, they were telling me I should I should do that, but I thought um, uh, their party was not selling books; they were raising money, they were sending it to Prabhupada for Prabhupada's projects and so forth, and. And I knew they were disturbing some of the uh, temples and the areas where the devotees would distribute books. This was in airports, but parking lots and places like that. Um, they were blazing through them and um, causing the uh, proprietors of those stores to disallow, you know, any such uh, proselytization or uh, fundraising on their premises and so forth. So anyway, I managed to um, come up with a plan at the time. Uh, another uh, godmother named Gopal Swami and then Trivikram Swami came early also from Japan. And they were telling me about how they collected funds in Japan by bowing their hands to the uh, people in the street, offering them a back to God and a piece of incense, and the Japanese people would generously give. And so I convinced Guru Kripa Swami and Yasodhana Swami they should go to Japan, you know, that the collection was really, really good there. They did. That's a whole other chapter. Uh, <laughs> but they went. They went there, and um, and so I, I kind of got out of the jam that uh, they, had, they had put me in, and and then Prabhupada called to see me personally. So um, he he had arrived, and and uh, and Prabhupada uh, was very kind to me, and he and he and he told me that um, so. All year long, you should go and preach and then come and spend one month with me in Mayapur Vrindavan every year. And so what was really happening there, in a sense, was that I, as I understood it, I was coming like directly under Prabhupada's um, care, if you will. Previously, I was in Los Angeles and I was, we were all following uh, the, 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 uh, the structure of authority there. And the leader in that regard was Karundar, who was the GVC. But when I was in Australia, um, he got distracted from the path and and left. That was a very powerful uh, uh, thing to have happen. So we had a lot of faith in him, and 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 for him to depart like that was extraordinary. I had, of course, before getting initiated, for some reason, I had prayer came into my heart and I said even if everybody to myself if everybody leaves this I'm never going to leave so I re remember that when I heard that Karandra had left and I took it you know in in stride and uh it just made me that much more earnest but it seemed now in Mayapur that uh, without kind of thinking about it in any calculated way Prabhupada had called me to see me and he told me this and so there I was, you know, I didn't have uh, a leader per se, a, G, a GBC, uh, and I didn't think you necessarily had to have one. I, I, and, I and I thought, well, Prabhupada's told me to do this, so I did. I, I thought I should come up with a, with a plan. And that's when Kishore Kishore then responded uh, to me and uh, more or less told me from what they did. And they gave the Dami, Budi, Ovan, they gave me the, the, the the knowledge from within, the intelligence from within, make 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 our more or less make our lotus feet 
your base. Hmm? So what did that mean? And uh, uh, that I began to um, try to understand and unfold. And gradually I came up with a plan. Hmm? And then Ramaswar arrived shortly thereafter and I told him my plan and he, he, he loved it. My plan was that I would base myself at the lotus feet of Kishore Kishori in Chicago. And from there, I would invite devotees from different temples hmm, uh, to come and spend a month with me, three or four of them at a time. And then I would send them back to their temples. And what they learned there, they would be able to share with the other devotees. And it was basically like, kind of like a, maybe a video lie of, you know, selling school of selling big books, large books, Prophet's Bhagavad Gita, the Bhagavatam, and so on and so forth, which I had developed some, you know, uh, ability to do. And so, um, you know, we didn't ask anybody else's permission and we didn't think it was necessary. <laughs> and and I thought, well, you know, Prabhupada has told me to do this. So I'll come up with a plan that we can serve him. And and I mentioned this because it was a year later that you know, that, that was a very successful plan. But to speed ahead for a moment, that was a year later in 19, that was the year of 1974. I put that plan into practice, but 1975, Returning to India, as Prabhupada told me to do year after year, the GBC called me in and said, you know, which I had never gone before the GBC. I didn't really know the difference really between them and the Wizard of Oz for the most part. And uh, and so um, they they uh, they asked me, who was your GBC? And I was uh, I was not rebellious or anything, but I wasn't dumb either. And I thought, oh, they, they want to control me. I said, oh, okay, okay, you know. And I said, well, like Karander was my GVC, but he blew. So, and that um, was uh, kind of they kind of blushed. They kind of got a little embarrassed from that. And they said, well, you need to have a GVC, and uh, you know, you're collecting a lot of money selling books, and which we were doing. Uh, we were living out of out of, out of a, a book. A, we call it a book bag, a bag that you could strap over your shoulder, and our belongings would be placed in the in the bag if we were to travel. And we would arrive at the next temple and take them out and fill them with books. And that's all we had. Hmm? And we lived like that for years. And we were we were raising lots of money. It's true. And every penny we were sending to uh, to the book fund. Hmm? And when they, so when they called me in and they told me they needed a GBC, I said, oh, you know, all right, you know, uh, and whatever. And then they went before Prabhupada as they would. They had, Prabhupada allowed them to have a meeting for three days and come up with some resolutions. And then they would run them by Prabhupada and he would say yay or nay or edit them and so forth. So they came to me and they said, my name, and they said, and uh, Trip Raridas. And I was told this by three GBC members afterwards, how I know. And Prabhupada's eyes got very big and he said, what has he done? Hmm? And Prabhupada said, and they said, Prabhupada, he doesn't have a GBC. And of course, then Prabhupada said, he does not need a GBC. Hmm? And whatever he said afterwards, the implication of it was that more or less management, which is what the GBC position is, kind of a Chattery position, organization, management is, it's, its ultimate success is that if you can manage yourself out of a job, in other words, you no longer need to manage. You've inspired everyone. They, 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 they're, they're, they, they want to do it, and they have because they have want to do it. They have insight how to do it, as well. And uh, I think that Prophet looked at at my service like that. Like, he doesn't need to be told what to do. He, he knows he knows what to do. It's, he's doing it, and nobody has to you know tell him. And nobody's doing it better. So you know in, you know with regard to a particular. Uh, particular service that was that was uh, obviously dear to Prabhupada. He was, you know, writing and he wanted to see the books circulated. There was a time when we had a warehouse of books in Los Angeles and, you know, nobody knew what to do with them or how they would ever be, you know, distributed and so forth. Um, and so, um, uh, so the, so anyway, I, I, uh, in the, in the, um, and that year, incidentally, then that year they passed a resolution, the GBC, the proper to prove that no one can take sannyas uh, unless they get recommended by the GBC and wait for one year. And that was a resolution. Two weeks later, in, in, in Davin, proper gave me sannyas. So, uh, you know, there was room to break the rules. So <laughs> rules are, are made to be to be broken. They have a purpose. They have a you know they have a, a limit. 
uh, just like, you know, morality, you know, it's, it's not to be all and end all of spiritual life. It's like a cage. We come out of animal life into a, into a cage of human life. And we, we learn to be polite and say, thank you and say, please. And then the door can, can, can open if you will. And we can move beyond the moral standard of say, of, of, of our ashram to actual a spiritual life where by contrast, Krishna's breaking all the rules. Hmm? Uh, so, uh, so what is that about? That Leela and so forth. So, at any rate, the, um, I took the, um, the plan, put it into action, and went to Chicago. And Shiva Vinda was in charge there. He was very gracious to accommodate uh, me and give me a small room. And then I uh, invited uh, three other devotees came, and they were all from Canada. It was Ganapati Das, Ganapati uh, Kashiram and Giri Jadava. So they joined me for one month there. And um, you know, I'm not an educated person. I have no higher education at all. And I never really had a career or a job or anything. So I I really didn't come to life until I met Prabhupada. That that just brought me to life. And, and then I, I did what I thought was not what I thought was the best thing to do, but it was something I can do. I can talk about these teachings and, and you know, share these with others is how it all happened. It turned out that it was very pleasing to Prabhupada, the book distribution, and so on and so forth. But, but to me, it was it was, it was was merely trying to please um, Prabhupada to get, I would pray to Krishna's blessing that I could please Prabhupada in this way, as I did to Kishore Kishore. Prabhupada wants this. And what the books mean, I know something, but what they mean to Prabhupada, that's another thing. And he, he, he lives in them. He wrote them. They're there is emotional ecstasies and so forth. So if I can, if you can give me the power to 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 serve him in this way, see that it circulated the books that which which he wants, then you know my life will be successful. It was kind of how I you know oriented myself and and how I became successful in the book distribution and in inspiring others as well. So those anyway, those three devotees came and joined me in Chicago, and we distributed books for a month. And our program was very um, extremely uh, spiritual. Uh, I mean, we, 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 that's where also I began to rise at three in the morning, which became something that almost every brahmachari in North America, and, and if, if the word got out to Europe, started to do as well. Rupanuga Prabhu, who was the GBC, told me, you better be careful what you say, because whatever you say, if you say, I eat oatmeal, every brahmachari will start eating oatmeal, because I think that's a formula, you know, part of the formula for his success for, for book distribution. I mean, I think he's obviously was exaggerating about it, but uh, and I was humbled to hear him say that. But there was some truth to it. Um, I was, uh, I was, I was a model, you know, that uh, others looked to, and um, I knew, and I took that role very, uh, very seriously, which which came to me, you know, quite, you know, uh, in this case, uh, by Kishore Kishore's grace, by Prabhupada's grace. So we we would rise at three in the morning chant all our rounds before mongol arctic go to the mongol arctic go to the Tulsi puja then it, the, the job period would be our reading period and we would, he would read read so separately or read together and then we would go to the class and greet the deities go to the class take prasadam and go off you know to the airport read in the, in the van on the way there read in the van on the way back come back take take a shower um go to arctic uh, go to the class and and then I had a little room they gave me with no windows so we'd gather in the room and eat, drink some hot milk and, 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 and read typically and it became a little contagious you know right? so there was only three and four of us there doing that and then other brahmacharis and other devotees used to, used to gather and the room was over overfilled got, got filled up it reminds me of what happened in Los Angeles when we were starting the uh, all day book distribution there myself, Leela Shakti, uh, Ganga Narayan, um, and maybe a couple of others. We had a little room that was uh, the book distribution room, right, where the books were kept and we would meet there and we would get our assignments or come up where we were going to go for the day and so on and so forth. And um, we were also very strict in our, in, in our practice. And that was kind of the leading example of this. And, and that room started to have an effulgence. Ramasar would talk about it very, very poetically, I'm sure. Uh, we, we had, a, had a kind of effulgence, and it, it started to draw other devotees in. What's going on in that room? 
what happens when they come back, you know, in, 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 in the evening, it had a glow to it and so forth. It was, was contagious. And so there was that this was happening in Chicago also at this time. And, um, and so the, the, and I'll tell a touching story that, that, that in this regard that, that speaks a little bit of how we felt uh, towards one another and how we uh, related and um, how beautiful and uh, Krishna consciousness was um, the relationship that we had budding and developing not only with Prabhupada, our guru, and Kishore Kishori, or the deity of your, of your, of your choice, but also with one another. You know, our ideal is to, is to, is to give rise to a, a dominant emotion, Stayibhav, for Krishna, right? There's a section in Bhagavad Gita Sambhita Sindhu all on Stayibhav, the Stayibhav of Sakya, the Stayibhav of Vatsalya, the Stayibhav of Madhuri, and so forth. And toward the end of the chapter, after speaking about all these types of love that are Krishna-centered, right? Krishna is the object of love for the Vatsalya. Krishna is the object of love for, for fraternal love, for, for Madhuri Rasa, and so forth. Krishna is the object, and the devotee is the shelter of that love, the embodiment of love, the personification of that love. This is Zachintya Veda Bed, right? There's the love, and there's the object of love. They're both one, and they're different at the same time. You have to have two, to have that one, that unity, that is love, dynamic unity. It reminds me of also how Prabhupada organized this movement based on that principle, Jinti Veda Veda. Um, the, the one was the philosophy, which was singular and enshrined in the books, which Prabhupada didn't want any changes in, right? He was very concerned about that. Right? Want, and I'm not going to get into that whole issue, but that, that they were edited later on. But I mean, he wanted, here's the philosophy. It is singular, hmm? uh, abed, and the expression of that is bade. So he wanted individual expression to be encouraged. Each temple he wanted to be autonomous. Hmm? The leader would inspire the devotees and they would, their own expression within the parameters of the philosophy hmm, would uh, how to serve and deity and so forth and 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 and, and share the teachings would would, would develop. Prabhupada was very concerned about that that, that that to preserve individual expression within the parameters of one singular philosophy. So he had the book trust, hmm, the Bhakti Vedanta book trust, um, as a separate uh, legal entity from ISKCON, and each of the temples were supposed to be separate, autonomous too, in, 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 in another sense. Um, but the, but the, 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 the temple life was like the religious life of religious expression, whether it be what type, of, what anga of bhakti one becomes most attracted to, or, or, uh, um, or in a higher sense, what, what sentiment? Is it going to be Sakya Bhav? Is it going to be Madhurya Bhav? And these are differences that ornament the singular philosophy. So he set it up like this, is Bed Abed. He, the, the book publishing was the Abed, and the, and the expression of it was, was the Bed, uh, the difference. So, um, yeah, he, it, it probably wanted a book, a book fund, the Bhakti Vedanta Book Trust, to be the preeminent book publishing um, uh, uh, facility publisher of uh, Vaishnav literature in the world. Hmm. Um, it's unfortunate now er everybody's publishing here, there, and, and, and everywhere. And it's not centralized. And then in some cases, it's probably overmanaged <laughs> in terms of uh, uh, rather than facilitating individual expression. You know, some of the devotees in the Chicago temple apparently wanted me to come for this occasion, but the management at a higher level, who doesn't live there, had a different idea. Um, the prophet wanted them to be free <laughs> enough, the, the temples, to make you know those kind of decisions themselves, wise enough, and um, and so forth. Um, so, with regard to Rupa Goswami's chapter on the Stai Baba dominant emotion, towards the end, the question. He writes a verse that that is obvious arising from a question within himself, 
that others might ask that you've written about these types of love for Krishna. What about the love in Braj? And that's what it's all about. But what about the love for one devotee for another devotee? How how does that work? What is that? And so he writes a verse there where he where he speaks about what he calls uh, suridrati, suridrati, the love of the friend. Hmm? Uh, it's a very significant verse, but but and many theological insights can be drawn from it. But the basic idea is that he explains there that the love of the devotees for one another is is basically a sanchari bhav. A sanchari bhav is a bhav that is also internal, like a stai bhav, a dominant of self-defining emotion, but another emotion that augments that temporarily, and then it recedes. It comes and goes. It comes and goes. So the love of the friend or the love for one devotee for another devotee is a type of spiritual love that constitutes the samchari bhav that, that nourishes the stai bhav. This is the you know the basic idea. There's, I say there's more to be drawn from the verse, but um, and so um, we were all of course young and sadhakas and so forth. This is a book about bhakti rasa, but it has some application with regard to our life as sadhakas, and and it draws me my memory to how we myself, Kashi Ram, uh, Ganapati. Giri Jadava, who just three examples, and they were the first examples hmm, of the of the, you know the the plan you know to have devotees come from other temples to spend a month with me there at the base at the feet of Kishore Kishori. They will give us the power, then to, we'll send you back to your area, and you can replicate you know, and so forth. Um, and uh, and um, as sadhakas, our relationship, our love for one another. It's, this is a this is a very endearing story to me that, that that speaks I think to how we felt the kind of brotherhood and sisterhood. I know we're supposed to call ladies mothers, but they were they were really sisters, <laughs> you know. Uh, we were all just brothers and sisters. Many of us were from alternative, most alternative culture, you know, and um, um, and. I never talked to women when I sold books, but I would I never had a problem talking to women devotees and teaching them how to sell books and 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 helping them and uh, and and being as much equally an inspiration to them uh, if I could be as to any uh, any any of any of the men. But anyway, the story after um, it, there's it's twofold. Gunapati Marsh was the um, was the he became a sannyasi later. He still is today. He was the uh, accountant. So we would we would you know sell the books at the airport. We would come back, and I would have all the devotees. We would open a like a a cloth, a dhoti, put it on the floor, and everybody would pour all the money in the center. No one could count the money, how much each one counted, and or how many each book everybody distributed. We just put it all in the pot, and then we and we collected the quarters and whatever the dollars, and then we gave it to Gandhi Swami, who did the accounting. And I, he might have must have opened the bank account, and he sent the money to to the BBT, right? And um, and and so um, about three weeks into the month, the, this is the first month at Kishore Kishori's feet uh, that we uh, this program had been launched, which became the most colorful chapter, I believe, if or Prakash window section of the Leela of Kishore Kishori that made the Chicago temple as famous or if not more than Los Angeles and and New York, <laughs> who had been the big cities, you know, and and, 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 and and had many more devotees and so on and so forth. This is what made Kishore Kishori famous is this uh, uh, airport, you know, book distribution Leela and, and rightfully so, because it, we'll go on, we'll see further how that's the case. But uh, with regard to this, feeling that we had, kind of the brotherhood, sisterhood, and so forth. Um, when, uh, after about three weeks of being together, Gunapati Swami took the liberty, without speaking to me, to spend a fair amount of the money uh, other than on 
printing books and sending it to Ramaswar. Again, we were living out of these book bags. We bought, never bought anything for ourselves. You know, I mean, you had to get toothpaste, but I mean, that the idea of you know um, spending money on yourself or something other than book distribution that just didn't uh, wasn't on the radar. Hmm? And so he had it became apparent that he had spent some money and a fair amount on something else. And that's why I said, "What's what's this about?" You know, hmm? and and then he said, well, we bought this and brought it out. This, this, uh, uh, well, you know, he told me, I should say, we bought a, a new plate for Kishore Kishori, you know, dining plate, a silver plate. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, that's a nice thing to do, you know, but I mean, he didn't even tell me about it, he didn't even ask me, you know, and, and uh, uh, so, you know, and he said, well, that was, you know, the other part of it. The reason we did it is because we wanted to give their old plate to you. I mean, <laughs> it's very beautiful how they felt. You know, I mean, I wasn't asking for any kind of, you know, recognition or distinction from them. We were all just brothers doing this, you know together giving our all in all yeah i was the leader you know but i was just the leader by my example if you could follow it you know i was setting a certain pace we'll get up at this time we'll you know and, and so forth um uh, and so they they, they 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 that's how they felt they wanted to you know they, they wanted to give kishore kishore's remnant plate to me as a dining plate i was i wept i thought how embarrassing this is you know how how endearing, you know, that they felt like this about me, you know. I mean, it's it, it's it's just an example of uh, the kind of love and camaraderie that we had, which was so much part of our our success. And then when and then when it was about a week later or so, I'm still reeling from this. When it was time for them to leave, and then they all approached me again, and they said, "We you know we had a, a suggestion for the party, how it could have been maybe improved." And I said, "Well, you know." You know what's that you know and they said well you know originally the plan was you would have two or three or whatever you know small number of devotees come here and be trained and go back to their base but we were thinking you need a permanent party of two or three men and then that party will train others who come hmm, and go back and they wanted to stay <laughs> to stay with me <laughs> they, we didn't want to you know i didn't want them to leave but i thought well that's the program you know and so um, but they, they told me that I, it was very, it was very de endearing. And it's like I say, it's like within the realm of sadhana, this is the Sanchari Bhav, you know, they loved me, I loved them. And together that augmented our love for Prabhupada and dedication to him and our love for Kishore Kishore. Of course, they had, they had to negotiate with their temple presidents why they weren't coming back. <laughs> uh, and they were successful in doing that uh, somehow or other. So I guess the short story wanted me to have a permanent party. And then we started, you know, inviting others and um, for the next round. And as this was going on, of course, um, the plan started to unfold and the success in Chicago, which was, again, as I mentioned earlier, illegally, a place to legally distribute books where it was not yet established by law that you could do that. In other other airports, like dominoes, they began to fall in the Los Angeles airport, this airport, that Kennedy Airport, uh, Cleveland Airport, you, you, you name it. There must have been at least a, a dozen of them in major cities that uh, Miami opened one after another following the, the, the case. I think that maybe, maybe Los Angeles was the first uh, case and Chicago was a precedent. It was already legal. Um, and so like it was all coming like, like you know, there we were. This was our base at the feet of Kishore Kishori, and 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 in my my perspective, they made all of that possible, and they they they, they um, and as such, this particular very colorful leela of theirs, if you will, uh, book distribution at the at the Chicago airport is what made the Chicago Temple famous amongst the amongst all of the all of the devotees and and, 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 and later on of course the 
over the years, this went on for years, the leadership changed, Sri Govinda and Sri Lanka, they, they moved on to some other service. I forget what was the reason behind that, but Uttama Sloka from Canada became the president. And then, then in, in, the, in the final hour, so to speak, of competition between now Los Angeles and New York and Chicago with regard to book distribution, Uttama Sloka could tell the story better than me, um, the, the, the devotees in Chicago, he had a conversation with Ramaswar after a big marathon who had sold, you know, the most books and so forth. Ramaswar said, we said, this many, this many, this many in, in Los Angeles. And I think Uttama Slok said, wow, yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot, that's a lot. And he led Ramaswar to believe that, that Los Angeles had, had been triumphant. And then he said, but here, you know, <laughs> he floored Ramaswar by telling him that we had, you know, done more books in, in Chicago at that time. So the crown uh, goes to the Goes to the beautiful couple, Kishore Kishori, with regard to book distribution. I believe that you know this particular deity, Kishore Kishori, that they were particularly uh, you know uh, involved in more than any other deity in the world, empowering and um, if not conceiving of and responding to a, a petition to a, a simple, uh, humble uh, brahmachari. They put it into a spiritual trance. Please give us the power to, either to take advantage of what's going on here in a small way, in, in 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 a large way. They responded to that. They made it all made it all possible, and um, and that became not only a chapter, of, obviously, of Kishore Kishori's Lila, but of the whole um, the whole movement. And um, it was, uh, I mean, we were <laughs> it, we were. Uh, um, we were young, we were innocent, we could have done it better, I suppose, but uh, 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 but if you had to do it again, but but it was perfect nonetheless, as it was, because we were sincere. And I'm just kind of explaining to you a little bit, you know, the feelings behind these, these, this, and how we felt for one another, how we, how we, how, how our success in my formula was always based on sadhana, you have to petition the deity. You have to chant. You have to hear. And we would, in the early days when our party was there in Chicago, we would take two days off and five days distribute. In those two days, we would attend every Artik in Kishore Kishori's temple. And in between, we would read. And we would read from Bhag from Nectar Devotion, from Bhagavatam, from the Gita. And this was before Chaitanya Charitamrita was published. So from each of Prabhupada's big books, we would read a section. Then I developed a system that we would read from, let's say, the Bhagavatam, and if Prabhupada quoted a verse in the Bhagavatam, then we would we would go to that verse in the purport. I mean, we, we would go to that verse. If it took us to another chapter of the Bhagavatam, then we'd read that verse, and in that port purport took us to the Bhagavad Gita, because the verse was quoted from the Gita, and we'd go to the Gita, and we'd read that, and then wherever that purport took us, if it quoted another verse, it would take us to the to an, to another book. And this way, we would we would read. And chant and go to every Arctic, and this is where we got our spiritual uh, power, Shakti, you know, to do this. So it was a, actually a very spiritually in, uh, entirely powered affair. And I, I think if you look at it, obviously, Prabhupada's whole campaign was empowered. Pujapachita Maharaj called him Shakti Vesh, you know, the, the, the Nityananda Vesh, the Nityananda Prabhu had, had lived within him hmm, to fulfill his uh, ambition to serve. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's um, desire to see Krishna consciousness, uh, Gaudi Vaishnavism, be uh, disseminated throughout the world. It's, it's a tall task in Prabhupada's estimation and by in anyone's estimation. And he, you know, he, he petitioned Krishna on the, on the Jaladuta with his famous prayer. Give me the power, Krishna. Uh, you know, it will be good for you, my dear friend, if you please Radharani. Hmm? That's that's a fact, he said. Hmm? It's like the pole star cannot move its focus. This will never change. Hmm? Your life will be successful if you please Radharani. Hmm? And then he says, and begins to speak about Bhakti Siddhanta and his order. The implication, of course, of which is Bhakti Siddhanta internally is a, is a maidservant of Radharani, as he himself told. Hmm? And so his order is, is Radharani's order, and that order has been given to me, and Krishna, you should give me the power. To fulfill that order, you talk. To, you can talk to Krishna like this. You're going to get power. <laughs> you're going to say, "What? Okay, you knew all that? My goodness! Here, take the whole of the power of Balaram in the form of Nityananda. 
let it live within you mm -hmm. and uh, and and spread this campaign so you know that was empowered krishna shakti vini nahi tata pravartana chaitanya charitamrita says without power from krishna swarup shakti it's not possible to be successful in a campaign of Sankirtan. Of course, this is the, the, the using the term of Bhakti Siddhanta, the Brihat Vardhanga, but I, but it had um, it was driven by Sarup Shakti. Otherwise, you know, there were problems when devotees got off course and so forth, and uh, things happened. But at at its heart, hmm, um, this was entirely a uh, uh, a, a spiritual affair, this book distribution, dr book distribution driven, uh, uh, let's say, blessed by Kishore Kishori, conceived by them, and played out through myself and and, and many, many, many others. Ultimately, they were, we, we used to send, we would send one of them of our party to, you know, be a resident in Los Angeles, one in, you know, in Philadelphia at the airport there, and, and, and so one after another, the airports opened and the book distribution was widely disseminated. At one point, you know, we, we were sending, you know, we still, we lived in a bag, right? Still and sending, you know, 50, 60, 70, $80,000 a month, our party to, um, to the, to the book fund. Eventually it expanded, I should say, from three permanent members to six, seven, eight, you know, Riddit Prabhu Kane was instrumental in getting me on this, uh, this uh, this podcast, Pragosh joined also uh, Vaisheshika. These are some of the famous members, Keshava Bharati Maharaj, and, and it, forgive me for not naming so many others, but they, they were, uh, we had about, I think, 12 or 13 permanent members ultimately of the party, which would go to different airports and and, um, and be the, the inspiration for the devotees there with regard to this uh, particular um, particular service um so it's a little bit of the story <laughs> it's uh it's nice to nice to talk about it and uh i know there are many many details within that especially in the chicago airport that devotees want to talk about and how this happened and that happened and, and how we got beaten up sometimes and how we you know uh, our trials the trials and tribulations legal um, difficulties and so on and so forth. I leave that to other other devotees. Though that's an important, you know, feature also of of, a, uh, of, of this uh, discussion. But this is how I wanted to speak about a little bit, kind of the broader parameters. And, and you know, sometimes it's criticized the, the book distribution, even in its time. It was probably wouldn't didn't tolerate that. He never did. I was criticized for the book distribution by some leaders, and Prabhupada said. If you can do better, then you can show him, and he will do. If you can show how to do better, then he will follow. But if you can't, then, you know, he's doing it. It may not be perfect, but he's doing it. And that's not just me. I mean, I, he, me means all these men and women who who were caught up in this, you know, who were, who hurt. And this is not to minimize any other devotee who was a pujari or a cook or, you know, we needed them as much, you know. Entirely to make it possible to have those uh, eggplant pakoras there, you know, with the, the tomato chutney at the Chicago Temple that became became famous uh, <laughs> during the you know later part of that that leela uh, and other things. Um, the kirtan, which was locus in Chicago, his famous uh, kirtan, how he trained the devotees up and so forth. All these things were were were, were required, but some of it uh, and important. I remember meeting with Prabhupada in Atlanta. And Prabhupada had been in, Latin, in in Central America. He'd gone to Mexico and Panama, and um, maybe he touched just the, the upper end of South America in, in Venezuela, and then he'd been to Miami, and then to Atlanta. And everywhere he was going in these countries, those countries, he, he had never been, and they were devotees, and they were going to Thai deities. And he came to Miami, and they were going to Thai deities. He came to Atlanta. They were born of Taididis, and all the so many devotees, book distributors had assembled there for that. And Prabhupada was so uh, ecstatic uh, that he he was lecturing at night, and after lecturing, he would ask for questions, which wasn't typical with Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. And then he he introduced the song of Lochandas Thakur, and he played the drum, Madanga, and so forth. And he was like really 
uh, very uh, spiritually emotional. Paramakarana Pahundi Jananitai Go, Chandra, Sarvabhutar, Sarjiro Mani Kebala, Ananda Kanda. You know, he was absorbed in, in Ananda Kanda. You know, it's not Gyan Kanda, it's not Upasana Kanda, it's not Karma Kanda, it's Ananda Kama Kanda only. <laughs> This uh, Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Anyway, a devotee asked, asked a question, a loaded question. Prabhupada, what's the best way to please you? Hmm? He wanted Prabhupada to say book distribution, you know. So there, there was a little bit of that that came up. I, I wasn't, you know, I didn't appreciate it too much. But Prabhupada was very, very, very smart, of course. And he said, just try to love Krishna. Hmm? That's how to please me. Try to love Krishna. And all the devotees were doing that. But some of us were called, you know, for this particular service, for book distribution. We had a particular, you know, some camaraderie amongst us and so forth. It was it was kind of like before we joined, well, I was a hippie, you know, so we'd see somebody down the block across the street. You knew exactly what he was thinking, how she was feeling, you know. We were all on the same, on the same page, you know. You just didn't stick out your thumb and somebody who knew how you were thinking, how you were feeling would pick you up, you know. There was some kind of camaraderie. So this was on a, you know, on another level, on a spiritual level. We knew how one another felt, what it was like, what we were, what we had to do in order to be successful in this, and how doing that made us successful not only in the circulation of the books, but in in deeply entering into. I mean, I talk about myself entering a trance. I don't, I'm not the only one who entered into a spiritual trance through this this service. As like every devotee who who hears about this, or talks about this, or remembers this. Will like and participated in this. Will re, will remember this as as some, if not the most um, memorable, uh, you know, days of their lives. Um, this was something about Prabhupada. Also, I should say that you know, he was he he wrote, of course, a whole you know so many books. But the, the, the theology is is unlimited in in the philosophy because there's not enough that you can ever say about Krishna. You you can't capture him in words or thought. You know, so in that way, book, Prabhupada's books or anybody's books. Or eliminated. You could. That's a you know a tenant. You know, a cornerstone of the philosophy. Nobody can say enough. Such is the nature of Krishna. Shankar will say you can't say anything about him because we can't behind beyond words and thought. We'll say our interpretation. Ikshater Nashabdat. You cannot say enough about him. You know. So. <laughs> um, so. The the basic teachings. Some people will look at Prabhupada's book as basic teaching. Compared to, you know, the, well, he did, you know, summary study of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu and Nectar Devotion. Then there's the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu with the commentaries and so forth. And it gets into greater detail and, and, and so on and so forth. But, but Prabhupada, um, one of the things about him that is very significant, I think, is that he was able to give the central philosophy in a very compelling way that, that, that fostered the kind of service immersion that gave deep experience and nothing can be more confirming in our spiritual life than experience the ecstasy the hair standing on end the tears hmm? some uh, you know, bhava um, uh, abhas by his grace that you, 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 you no philosophy no no point no no uh, Shastra Yukti, reasoning about the scripture or, or verse, or is as confirming, right, of a praman, uh, evidence of what I'm doing is this is something, uh, the, 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 this is this is this is right, <laughs> this is the truth, is that experience in this particular service, it was very powerful. Mm-hmm. That is Kishore Kishore's grace. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it gave devotees deep experience of what it, a glimpse. Into into the world of ecstasy, stai bhav, sanchari bhav, anubhav, sattvic bhav. They got a little. They all got a little sattvic bhav for this, at least to some extent. Or they they wouldn't have done it because it wasn't easy to do to go out there all day long, and, and stand on your feet and talk to people who blew smoke in your face and face and ask you know, what are you doing here? What are you talking about? It was hard to do. It, it really was, and it was it was um, it was done and. Uh, uh, was possible to be done because of the joy that of spiritual ecstasy that, that came out of it. So we owe a great debt to um, to all the devotees and, and to Kishore Kishore in particular. I had a chance to say something about them in terms of this and how I look at this whole uh, episode, if you will, this whole chapter, this whole prakash of their leela uh, as a chapter within this very very colorful chapter. In, in this con where they play the central role. So 
that's um, my thoughts on the matter. I appreciate the opportunity to, to speak about it with you. If you want to ask me anything about that or comments, I'd be happy to learn more from you or, or um, um, respond to your inquisitiveness as much as they may, it may be there. Thank you, Maharaj. I think it's refitting that you speak about it in such a, a broad way and also a very deep way because really you were and have been the clearing for those devotees in those pastimes to show up for whatever reason, Krishna and Srila Prabhupada and Sri Sri Kishore Kishori selected you for that service. Yes, it's a blessing. Today. I have to, I have to admit, I'm, I'm not special, but I've been blessed. That's true. I, I know I've been blessed. Mm -hmm. The other thing I'd like to say, Maharaj, is that um, Krishna, as Prabhupada said, Krishna consciousness is simple for the simple and mm -hmm. complex, yeah. complicated, or it, it's really um, in, in your speaking over the years, I've always found um, great solace or that there's there's such a depth to this tradition that it can go as deep as as you need it to or as you want to go into it there's like no limits to the depths of this and it's always been a great um for me source of inspiration uh hearing hearing your reports back from the depths of the ocean of the nectar of devotion and knowing it's that you know <laughs> that those depths exist well <laughs> Happy to surface every now and then <laughs> and share. Uh, I, I, you know, I did have to, but uh, I did dive deep, and fortunately, I didn't come up uh, empty, empty-handed. And and it's not whatever I have in terms of knowledge and experience. It's it's not um, um, mine in as much as it's meant to be shared. That others might be able to um, take advantage of that and um, and grow. Um, so I hope, you know, reflecting on things like this, that this particular time and the way that I talked about it can help us in the times in which we live and, and, and serve today, which are very, very different from those days. Those days, there were just a handful of us and we, 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 were, we were a small group, you know. We used to eat uh, on wax paper plates, you know, sometimes there wasn't enough uh, money to go around to buy paper plates and you had to eat your oatmeal before it, you know, melted the... <laughs> The, the wax paper plate <laughs> and your little piece of ginger and one slice of orange and eight chickpeas or whatever you know whatever it was was the, was the formula those were very beautiful beautiful days and I, and i'm you know 74 this year i turned and i find myself um reflecting on those days more and more so this was a welcome in one sense the way it came to me it, i was invited by some devotees but it didn't ultimately wasn't approved by by the leaders which could have their own reasons for that and Certainly, um, um, they're, 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 they're leading in, in this kind of way that I'm not formally, so they have their rights to do so and their insights and so forth. But, um, but yeah, um, uh, it, 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 times are different now. And, but I find myself at this stage in my life reflecting on these early times. So, so as I say, that this came to me at a time when I was already doing that, and, I, and yes, the Chicago Lila and so forth. And, you know, I see the video of the devotees, like in Los Angeles, where, you know, I kind of grew up for two or three years there before I took sannyas. Uh, I see the pictures of them and I weep, you know, who, who this one, that one, you know, and I see them in their swaroop, like they, 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 they're, 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 I know that they're fully serving with all their might at, at that time. And we're not all in that position now. We're separated. And, of course, there's another generation and another, another generation practically and so forth and so on. But to recapture that uh, uh, initial spirit of Prabhupada Weaver, who said this movement should be managed by love and trust. Those are the, those are the rules, you know. That's like, wow, that's, you know, that's, that sounds pretty simple. We said it's simple for the simple uh, yeah, we can make it complicated, but it's not. It's not complicated. You have to give your all in all, and 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 it's not hard to be humble if you understand. If you think about who Krishna is, and what you, and what your position is, and it, it, just put it together and humbly 
carry on. So, you know, I hope that there would be more meetings like this amongst devotees, remembering the past in the ways that, that devotees presently serving NISCON and other institutions can give up any kind of sectarian uh, spirit that's arisen, that's that's so divisive and um, and um, un, not not helpful at all for our ideal. You know, like I mean, I mean, I'm not a member of ISKCON. I'm here. I'm talking about ISKCON, but I, you know, Prophet called me in one letter a pillar of ISKCON. Uh, you know, I was once in 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 <laughs> in Loy Bazaar. You know, in a bazaar in in Vrindavan that we made famous in those days, uh, and it was after I had. Uh, by force of circumstances uh, to serve, had to serve outside of ISKCON. I was with a cloth merchant talking to me. He said, so Maharaj, what temple are you with now? You know? I said, oh no, I'm not in ISKCON. And he laughed. He said, you can, you are always ISKCON. You are ISKCON. You cannot leave ISKCON. There is a, you know? <laughs> and I thought, yeah, you're right about that. You know, he's right about that. Uh, I had to, you know, mm-hmm. appreciate that. It's you know international society for Krishna consciousness. I do think it, it you know it goes beyond the boundaries of a, at this point of a, of a, of its particular corporate you know structure. This gun should be, in my estimation, that society that recognizes Krishna consciousness wherever it is and celebrates it. You know, I had some differences with the leaders. I shouldn't go into this, but I'm going to say for a moment. You know, it was based on a, the inspiration uh, given by Prabhupada to take shelter of Shiva Marsh for Siksha, if, if you so desire or were so inspired that he gave. I was massaging his feet when he told us that in Vrindavan. So, you know, I ended up doing that and he, and Pujapashita Marsh was very inspiring. At the time the leaders of ISKCON thought it was not a good idea and it wouldn't it would be problematic for managing ISKCON to have another authority that was clearly superior to themselves in spirit spirituality. And, and and so, you know, there's room for that understanding. Okay, you know, I differed and I thought it would be better to take his, his authority and I didn't think that he would interfere with the management structure but they did and that's fair for them to think like that I and mean, we should have just respected one another and said you know okay well we have some difference on this point but hey we're in this together you know for the long run and there's different ways to do it so you do it like that you to primaries and others who feel like that we'll do it like this and let's check back in you know over time and see what the, if we can learn anything from one another what the successes are or the shortcomings are we can have festivals. We could, you know, attend and share. And this gun can overflow. I mean, after all, this gun is profit centered, and profit had a relationship with Sridhar Marsh that most of devotees don't know much about. Some of us do, so we know something about profit. <laughs> I know everything that everybody else knows about profit. But I, you know, I didn't miss a trick on that side. But I know this side about him too, hmm? and um, that's also beautiful. Um, and not everybody has to know that side to be to be perfect. But you know. Uh, I mean, I'm just going on. I'm, I'm really trying to speak about the just re- remembering how how we felt in the early days and, and the days of this book distribution. Some examples of which I gave, and if, if we could feel all of us like that uh, um, towards one another again, and these sectarian boundaries would be dissolved, I think it would be would be very um, that would be very pleased. Hmm? Mm-hmm. Okay. About your statement, Maharaj, that you said that you're you're no longer in ISCON. I just had a, a technical question about that. Have you have you returned your membership card? <laughs> well, they weren't giving out any membership cards, as I recall. So uh, yeah, but, but, apparently you, know, you, you, you can't leave until you return the membership card. Okay. <laughs> That's uh, the trick well. of it. Membership is eternal. Once you're in, <laughs> nobody leaves. <laughs> Yeah, it's a life. It's, it's a to, life after life membership. It's heartening, heartening to know that. So, <laughs> Dana Davy has right, some so, questions that she's been okay. noting down. Do you have a couple of minutes okay. to yeah, sure, to respond sure. to um, those? Thank you, Maharaj, for sharing your time. Um, so I hear your your love and your passion and serving Sri Prabhupada. And what, one thing that is very touching is when you mentioning about your brothers. You know, they are like your brothers and sisters and that mutual love, that synchronicity between you two, all of you, you know, there was trust and love, like you said. What would be your um, your advice to newcomers or to the young devotees that are distributing books? Because 
it appears there is some distortions in it. They want to do a lot of service. They have that passion, that youthfulness, and they want to serve Srila Prabhupada, but yet they are faced um, with this managerial issues, the corruption that is happening. There is a lot of dissolution. What would be your advice for, for them? Well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know all, all the details of what's going on in this gun with regard to managerial issues or corruption and so on and so forth. But um, I, I would say that uh, it, it wasn't, there, there was corruption in ISKCON when I was in ISKCON, when Prabhupada was here also. Things happened that should have never happened that were very surprising. Leaders did things that uh, that uh, you, you never would have expected uh, and uh, were shocking and so forth. So I, I can speak to that experience and how I dealt with that experience, which was basically to, uh, you, you can't have, you, you know, you can't have, if there's bogus gurus, there must be real gurus, but you can't have bogus gurus if there's not real gurus. So I look at it, you know, that our spiritual life is driven on two sides by positive and negative impetus. Negative impetus is the world is not, you know, that friendly. There's no place for a gentleman or woman. Hmm? That's what Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur used to say. Um, it's temporary, you know, it, it, nothing, nothing lasts forever, and so on and so forth, right? Uh, uh, we're attached to something. We can't keep it. The more you like it, the more problematic it is. Because you can't keep it. So, yeah, Dukalaya Mashashvatam, as the Gita says. So, this is the nature of the world. In a broad sense, this is our negative impetus, right? Positive impetus is how beautiful is Krishna, how how optimistic hmm, that you are allowed into the inner chambers, you know, of, uh, within transcendence. The gate's been opened. By, by by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Golo Ker Premodhan, Hari Nam Sankirtan. So, one side, the world is, you know, we have a pessimistic look about the out, the world of, of our objective external experience. And then from the other side, the super subjective internal, well, the great optimism. So, our spiritual life is driven by negative impetus and positive impetus. Now, if you want to add particulars to the negative impetus, it can be as bad as those who were part of our positive impetus become negative impetus. Other devotees, they do things that uh, we can't uh, relate to or that aren't, shouldn't be done and, uh, and so forth. Obviously, it's very disconcerting, but I'm not a stranger to that myself in the time that I was in ISKCON and even outside of ISKCON, I've seen things like that. But I just take it as negative impetus, further negative impetus. Hmm. There's only one way to go. You can't, you, 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 younger devotees who, who, who find managerial issues, institutional in issues, which can, which can, can include social perspectives, you know, how to respond to things in the world, thought currents in the world, uh, you know, uh, in, in the world of everyday life and so forth, who find managerial perspectives on that to be, you know, troubling, let's say. This might be an example, you know, troubling. Um, um, or, you know, it, it, it obviously could be, uh, could be worse than that. I think they just have to, you know, see it as a, as, as a negative impetus and gravitate towards, for younger devotees, for, or any devotee really, basic core tenets of the philosophy. Hmm? In other words, things that you're alluding to could derail a devotee. Because if they lose their enthusiasm, a, you know, how are they going to carry on, right? And they think, I joined this movement, it was supposed to be like this, and I find this, that maybe there's a child abuse going on. There's an example of, you know, of, of abuses. And so uh, to be derailed and think, I don't want to be part of this. They have to gravitate towards core philosophical tenets and 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 think you know has it changed the fact that my conviction is i'm not the body and i have some experience of it hopefully i've been absorbed enough to have some experience to know i'm eternal uh, uh, 
it, it, it hasn't changed because somebody did that. Mm -hmm. That hasn't changed. And, uh, and, and now let's look at theistically. Okay, there's a philosophical, you're not the body. Theistically, well, who's a, is, is there a God or not? Well, um, if there's not, there's no hope. <laughs> then there's no meaning, there's no purpose to, you know, to life. Uh, you can say, I don't believe in God because uh, there's so much suffering in the world. That doesn't change the suffering in the world. And people who believe in God have the just to do something about the suffering <laughs> and try to alleviate it. More than people who, who 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 don't believe in God and say there's nothing, you know, there's no meaning, no purpose, and so forth. So, and then amongst the candidates for God, well, Krishna's a pretty charming uh, candidate. Hmm? Um, and they can make a good argument for that. So, you have to gravitate towards that. Theologically speaking, well, uh, you know, yes, I believe in Krishna. Hmm? I believe I believe I'm, you know, hopefully I have some experience of it. I believe I'm not the body. Philosophical experience. Some hopefully I have some experience of. It. I have to gravitate towards these core issues and not get derailed if you will from the practice because somebody did something does that mean now i should i'm the body so i should act accordingly and give up this you know this 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 uh world view no not not at all i may have to change my location you know distance myself from that devotee we're told we should we'd love all devotees well yeah as long as you got enough distance so this is, this is a formula. <laughs> if you want to respect all devotees, you have to have enough distance from all of them, enough closeness. And enough, some of them you've got to be countries and light years away from. <laughs> and if you are, then you can respect them. <laughs> He's also a devotee. But, but if you get too close, <laughs> not only you can uh, learn anything from him, but you can learn something. You can, you, you're in the face of maybe a bad habit. So, so, and also devotees, they have some freedom, you know. So, if a certain sect, you have to you have to associate with like-minded devotees. Mm -hmm. Rupa Goswami says, um, "Snigdastya Svajatiya." Mm -hmm. You have to association means with like-minded Svajatiya, Svajatiya, and Snigdastya, affectionate devotees. So find devotees who you're like-minded with, mm -hmm. who are affectionate, and associate with them. And don't stay in one situation in the name of following uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mandate to be tolerant like a tree. That mandate is there. You should be tolerant like a tree. Hmm? But you should be tolerant like a tree within a circumstance and a situation that's favorable to your practice. <laughs> so you have the, the facility to change your situation. Hmm? Hmm? And then tolerate within that. Some devotee some years ago I got, met me and said, you know, Marge, you should come back and join ISKCON. I said, really? Why? He said, well, you know, in the least you'd have an opportunity to talk, to grow in tolerance. I said, I have plenty to tolerate outside of ISKCON. I don't have to go in, into a more intolerable situation as you're portraying it, you know, to, 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 to cultivate that, uh, that, 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 that quality. So, um, you know, be intelligent. You, 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 this is something you have to be a thinking person to be a devotee. Everybody, nobody's going to think for you. To some extent, uh, you know, the guru tells us how to think, what to think, but that's unlimited. It tells us what to think, that's limited. How to think, hmm, that's a big thing. How to think, how to think. And then there's so much room for thinking hmm, in Krishna consciousness within that. So you look at the, look at the, the practice transcends any any of the institutions that we have. Prabhupada, when when Shri Sarup couldn't function within the rules of his and GBC, Prabhupada so function outside. But you, you can you can be separate from the institution, but not from the practice. All right. So, um, so that, that is a way in which I'll answer that at the moment. Does that help? <laughs> yeah, totally, Prabhu. Oh, sorry, Maharaj. Um, absolutely. Uh... Is to the point. Yes. <laughs> well, I Go said ahead. that. Please. Um, the other thing I pick up while you were um, sharing your experience and in your early days, one thing that I wanted to ask you is what was the impulse then for you to go and be single pointed and said, This is my Maharaj? He says this, I'm going to do it. You use your intelligence to 
see things what is needed and you just plan it accordingly and you you follow it through. What is that impulse, Maharaj? Can you share a bit about that, please? What is that? What, what is that? What, what is hmm? Impulse. Impulse. I, impulse. <laughs> well, <laughs> uh, you know, it's not my first time around. Let's put it like that. Hmm. Not the first birth I've been involved in this. When I met Prabhupada, when I saw Prabhupada appeared to me in a dream before I ever met him, um, and then that dream played itself out in the future. Um, that's another story. But when I met him personally, um, I saw him for the first time in an airport, <laughs> of all places, right? And then Los Angeles was an airport, and I wept uh, upon seeing him, and he looked at me. And Prabhupada, probably the most prominent thing about his, no doubt, his physical features was his eyes. Mm -hmm. Bhakti Balade Vijibhushan speaks about some devotees have this power of a glance mm -hmm. to, to, to give a blessing. And Prabhupada had that. He would look at you and it would just go right, you know, to, to the core of your soul. And if you weren't conducting yourself selflessly, you, you, couldn't, you couldn't maintain the glance. You know? um, I was uh, really making my best effort to give my all and all to Prabhupada. And, and, and so when I met him, he glanced at me. You know, it could have been, a, if Prabhupada would look at you for five seconds, that's a yuga. One, two, three, four, five. If you haven't melted, but you know, you're, you're, you're either going to look away or you're going to melt. So when I saw Prabhupada the first time, uh, I knew this is not the first time I met this person. He's coming back for me. That's how, that's a, you know, however you want to look at it, it's the whole, that's a whole interesting topic, you know. Uh, but uh, but the, the guru relationship eternally with the disciple. But I knew in this form, Krishna's coming coming again for me. I, I was kind of a, I think I was kind of humorous for Prabhupada, but I had no doubt that, you know, I, I know things about him. He's showing me things internally. So, you know, we all the flowers don't blossom on, on, in, in the garden at the same time. You know? So I kind of hit the ground running when it comes to Krishna consciousness. I was floundering otherwise in the world I didn't bring any talents to the movement or anything like that or any, any, any experience to share like so many other devotees did and helped to make it great I just brought my my, my, my past you know it, 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 you will take birth and whatever whatever you have to go through a, typically through a period of of, of expending some, some parabda karma that that it reaches a point where now you can pick up where you left off. And, um, and so for me, I, you know, I left off from a good place in the previous life. So I, I had this, it was very natural for me, for me. Um, so all I can say, what was, what was, what was my impulse? I think this leads into this next question. Here. It's interesting because the, when you were talking and that love, that experience, and your dedication to him is like he's not from this universe or any any earthly planet that he take he has taken birth, and he's not coming for the first time to see uh, to serve Shila Prabhupada. Because <laughs> what I write as a question oh. is what what universe did you come to serve Shila Prabhupada? Because this is <laughs> not. You know, a birth, earth, birth. Um, whatever universe he was in, back. last, whatever <laughs> universe he was in previously, <laughs> I, 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 would, I, would, I must must have been there. Let's just leave it at that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm again. I, I, I don't. This shouldn't be about me, but um, uh, if, if there's anything about me, it's I've been blessed. So it's a blessing. I've been blessed, and blessing is it, that's kripa. You know, it's not justice. It's it's mercy. Hmm? You can't ask the why of that. Hmm? If you're in line waiting for mercy and someone's behind you and at the counter they say, bring that person behind you first, you can't complain and say, that's not just. Hmm? He was behind me. Do you want justice or do you want mercy? Hmm? Mercy overrides justice, right? It overrides justice. Hmm? We're So we're the why of it. Hmm? We don't, there's no why about it. Another question? 
Yeah, you quoted Maharaj from the song by Srila Prabhupada, Krishna Tabapunya Have Vai, oh. earlier. And um, that is not really, it doesn't seem to be so well known amongst the devotees, that song, or the, or the particular um, confidential conclusions that are expressed in there. I was wondering if you could say a little bit about that, that song by Srila Prabhupada. Well, that happens to be something else that I've been called on to do. You know, you asked me about my service, uh, you know, in, with regard to book distribution and and uh, in particular in relation to Kishore Kishori and so forth. But uh, you know, I, I'm not I'm not there in Chicago anymore. I'm I'm still serving. So this is something else that uh, in this stage of my life I've been called to do uh, bring some attention to mm-hmm. that prayer. Mm-hmm. And um, published a small book called Oh My Friend, Oh My Friend. It's a small book. It's very worth uh, getting a copy of. Hmm? It's available on Amazon. Oh My Friend, Oh My Friend. And it's all about things, it's all about what Prabhupada said about his own inner life, the, the, which is expressed in that um, um, very beautifully in the prayer. I don't want to go into detail here, but I'll ask that uh, perhaps you give me a chance to speak on your podcast again in upcoming months on publishing a book called Circle of Friends, where this is also, um, um, this topic also is is dealt with. It's a book about Sakirasa. And um, um, it's quite a, it's quite a tome, you know, it's the 500 pages. So it's, it's a pretty in-depth uh dissertation or treatise on the subject, but um, the prayer does does, does come up and um, it's discussed there. But in short, um, yeah, uh, the prayer is beautiful in that it's it's very beautifully divided by uh, Sharanagati, the, 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 the desire for surrender in Sharanagati and then, and then, and then the second part, the longing, hmm? For attainment of a particular spiritual ideal, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur used to say, "First desire, first deserve, then desire." So, what he means by that is, first, you know, surrender. Then, this, then, then you can, then you can say, "I, I you know, I'd like to serve like this," because that will come out. <laughs> Sharanagati is the dramatic stage, if you will, on which the drama of Krishna Lila will be performed. Mm-hmm coming to a theater near you, in your heart. So sadhana bhakti is all about sharanagati, growing, establishing, building the stage of sharanagati. This is a, is a particular anga of bhakti, but it's something that was very much central to the teachings of bhakti Vinod Thakur also, sixfold sharanagati. So if you, if you, uh, you know, you study Prabhupada's poem, the first half is, is all in the spirit of Sharanagati. And you, and then you, you can see how much he is deserving, if you will. And then the second half, he expresses a longing. Mm-hmm. I mean, just the sound of the words that he chose speak, they speak about the nature of the aspiration that he is um, that that, that um, arises, if you will, out of his um, his, his, his sharanagati, chutta chutti, kottavani chutta chutti, vanekai lutuputi. I mean, this is very beautiful. Um, um, uh, description of. Uh, Sakya Bhav. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Prabhupada wrote the poem not as a public, uh, you know, for book distribution. This is Prabhupada, you know, crossing the Atlantic, writing a poem to his friend Krishna. Mm -hmm. Uh, And confiding in him, bargaining with him, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, and if you Radharani is pleased with you, then you know your life's going to be successful. And incidentally, 
you were, you, 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 my guru, who is Radharani's servant, has asked me to do this. So if you give me the power to do this, well, you know, then I'll be successful. Otherwise, how is it possible? You know, and, and of course, his life example, getting on the boat, leaving Bombay on the day of Purnim, as he did in the midst of the ocean. I mean, this is an ocean of Sharanagati. Somebody once told me, you know, a real guru does madhukari in Vrindavan. Madhukari means you go out like door to door, whatever you get, that's what you're going to eat for the day, you know. And your guru is flying on big airplanes, you know. What is this? I said, well, well, you know, uh, he did madhukari in in uh, in New York in the winter. He was a homeless person. Well, there's no chapatis. There's no place you can go and get a get a get a free meal of kitchen. You can't go beg the door door to door and expect to get a meal. I mean, I went on at quite a, quite a bit of length. Um, and what goes on in the name of Madhukari and Vrindavan a lot of times is is the far cry from actual Madhukari. But anyway, Prabhupada, his Sharanagati is like you can you there you cannot in any way. You may criticize Prabhupada. Some people do. It's very painful to hear and. And, um, um, you know, sometimes he didn't dot an I or cross a T. He left that to some of us, you know, to carry on philosophically. He wanted us to write books, too, right? So I've, I've taken going from distributing them to, to writing them. Um, but um, but no one can, I mean, did Prabhupada love Krishna? I mean, it's like a ridiculous question. Nobody nobody can. You just have to ask. You're going to have criticism of Prabhupada within Gaudi Vaishnava. Did, what do you think? Did my guru Maharaj, the Prabhupada, did my Param guru, uh, the founder of Jari of Iskand, did he love Krishna? I mean, you know, it's like a silly question. I mean, his Sharanagati, there's, there's no, there's no, it would be difficult to find a better example of that. And that is, that is out of which that Sharanagati, that, that Bhava arises. It doesn't come out of anything else. There's no other way for that to happen. It comes out of Sharanagati. And his example of Sharanagati is so extraordinary. It's just unbelievable. It's unbelievable what he did. Um, you know, uh, living in Vrindavan and every and, and and then I don't know. He got a few rupees here and there, and spending it to get to take the train to go to you know to, to Delhi, you know, to, to to publish a magazine, you know, and sell it in the tea shops. And anyway, we could go on forever. But his Sharanagati is undeniable and, and, and extraordinary, and so you have to conclude his whole campaign was driven by by Baba against Krishna Shakti meaning without that Shakti it's not possible. So the second part, anyway, the second part of his prayer is all about his um, internal aspirations hmm, upon serving his guru in this way, getting the power from Krishna. This is what I want to do. Hmm? I want to join you in your cowherding. This is what he says. I want to join you in your cowherding leader. And, and fall on the ground and do somersaults and, and throughout the day playing through the different forests and herding cows. Hmm? Say, Dean, Club of more. When and when will that day be mine? I mean, it's a very powerful poem. This, a poem that Prabhupada again wrote, not for being published, not for circulating, in his most private moments, in, in his in, 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 in embarking on a huge. Um, uh, uh, you know, well, adventure of surrender to Bhakti. And he didn't know who he said he got, got off the boat, whether to turn left or right in Boston. Hmm? What did he know about the United States? He didn't have an internet. He'd read something in, the, in some Christian tract that he found, uh, you know, on the table in a tea shop. Oh, that's how they think. Okay, well, you know, and reference it in his Back to God magazine that he was writing. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just incredible how he, how, um, and, and to write about that and then to discover that poem. Hmm? And this is what he, and what does it mean? And much to my surprise, Shittamarsh had it memorized. Hmm? So he thought, oh, this is something very important. Yes, the Bhagavad Gita is important. Yes, the Chaitanya Charitam read the Prabhupada's purports to the Bhagavatam. These are very important. Shittamarsh kept this poem and he knew it. Hmm? The, the, the he had it memorized. Lines. Yeah, mm. the, the main lines, the refrain, and, yep. and a couple of the main lines. He had analyzed it and understood. 
uh, this is this is the this is the driving force behind this is his life. Then he began to you know uh, explain give find other examples of that in prophet's preaching hmm, that demonstrated this is the bhava behind that. And he was very uh, um, he was very moved by that. Um, Shiro Marsh. Um, there would be the second god brother of his who is the uh, uh, Krishna Das Babaji also wrote to him and expressed directly his own affinity for and attainment of Sakyabhav. So, so this is a big, you know, thing. I mean, <laughs> especially for older devotees, there's another, you know, there's 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 another side to Prabhupada that you're supposed to get acquainted with. That, that, that we, we talk about him in his sadhaka day. Uh, we could talk forever, but there's an internal side to him as well. And and I'm not speculating about it. It's going based, based on what he said, what he said over and over. And so many ways, that's what we published in that little book. Oh, my friend, it's very, very, very compelling. It's everything Prabhupada said about himself, his inner aspirations and so forth. And there's a lot. You'd be surprised. There's a lot. I wanted to do away with speculation by publishing it because some people started to speculate what was Prabhupada's position and so forth. And they, they, they had their own reasoning for that. And I appreciated their reasoning, but it's it's reasoning that's that that lacks that kind of information from Prabhupada that, we, that you could be privy to if you studied him very carefully. So he wanted to make that available, and you know nobody else did that of all the Prabhupada's disciples. Nobody was concerned about that. Um, I was concerned. I knew I <laughs> let's say I had, I had my own inkling. What was what is Prabhupada's nature? Hmm? internally and so when it became it began to be popularized otherwise i thought well, I, I guess i have to say something here and that's why we published that book and then some devotees asked me to write more about this topic so I, a few years i took to write circle of friends and um it's all about this wave of of of, of sakya bab its history in the sampradaya how it's risen and fallen and and and, and here how it's risen again in a big way through Prabhupada, and um, that's a really extraordinary thing to celebrate in in the Sampradaya. So there's there, there, there's there's just a whole other chapter, if you will, of of, of, of Prabhupada, if you will, in way of uh, appreciating his contribution. It's not only in, in terms of quantity of distribution, hmm, which is you know typically what we speak to him, speak we, we glorify him for, which is uncanny. But unique internal life also that 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 harkens back to the very beginning of the whole sampradaya. The whole sampradaya began hmm, uh, with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's blessing and order to Nityananda Prabhu, who collected his Dwadasa Gopal associates hmm, and began initiating and starting centers in in, in Bengal. They were all Sakura centers, and the, the reason, of course, that. Ma, Manjari Bhav took precedence, and this is the highest ideal of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. You know, Baladev, what's his position? You know, how can Baladev directly participate in Krishna's uh, romantic leela? He can't. Hmm? But in Gaur Leela, he, as Nityananda Prabhu, he has a great opportunity to participate in it by bringing people to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, pointing to him, pointing to him. Chaitanya Bhagavat says, you know, that. It did not have brought Gopi Bob to the world because he point he pointed out who was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Give all your attention to him. Hmm? But in very inevitably, some people also well they 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 caught the Bob of uh, you know Nityananda Prabhu as well. So there's a place for Sakya Ras. It has a second uh, a, a supporting role, if you will, hmm? in the drama of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mission. And it's very important. And these two, of course, Sakya and Madhurya, they're they're the only two Rasas of Braj that are compatible with one another. How compatible they are! You'll be really surprised if you read my book. Um, it's it's uh, it, it's quite. Uh... So have me on your show when a book comes out. We'll talk yeah. about it. Okay. There's, a, there's okay. a teaser right there. It's a trailer <laughs> okay. for the episode. Okay, okay. I'm a little long winded. I'm sorry. Sorry to take up so much time. But no, ekshatir na shabda. Not enough can never be said. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Can we Thank close you, Maharaj. There, all right. Yeah. So, <laughs> Maharaj, one yes. moment before you go, just like uh, offering the water of the Ganges into the Ganges itself, although I am completely unqualified to do so, I acknowledge you for your service to Srila Prabhupada, to his mission of ISKCON, to Sri Sri Kishore Kishori, 
in Chicago, to the BBT, and to the Sankirtan movement, and all of the devotees that you have served and influenced, mentored, inspired throughout the decades, continue to expand your spiritual master's mission in this world. And for this, we thank you and we honor you. Thank you, Maharaj. We need you. Jai, Jai. 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 Hari Hari Bol. Hare Krishna. I think now we should chant Hare Krishna.